What's up guys, it's Thomas here. Hope you're doing really well. Today we are going to restring a Kiesel headless guitar. It's something that I usually do on my Twitch channel and I find it quite therapeutic, relaxing, reading and chatting whilst restringing guitars. So if you haven't already followed me on Twitch, then maybe take a second to go do that and uh, hope to see you live sometime. So today we are gonna restring this awesome Kiesel Type X. It's a really, really cool guitar. And if you're a little bit unsure about restringing your Kiesel headless guitar, as I was a couple of years ago when I first got my, uh, what was it? It was an Osiris. And man, did I make some mistakes and did I burn through some strings in a hurry? And then obviously I went on to YouTube to try and find a suitable video to show me how it was done. But even then I had a lot of questions. So today I'm gonna fire up a couple of extra cameras and uh, I'll talk you through some of the steps that I like to do when I'm restringing my headless guitars. And um, this will also uh, apply to models like the Vader, Osiris, Zeus, Leia, if you have a trem, any guitar, well, any headless guitar that uses this hip shop trem. Now, before we get into the restringing, there's a couple of things that I like to have at hand. Obviously we like strings, but things like Allen keys, um, string cutters. This is a little Daddario string cutter. Um, sometimes we might take all the strings off. You have to be a little bit more careful when you're doing that. Today we're going to do one string at a time, but it's a good opportunity to get your cloth out, clean under the pickups and around the pickups and, and just that general area. Um, it's always good to have a tuner because at some point we're going to have to get up to pitch. And, um, and obviously some Allen keys to take the string out at the top. Hey, it's Edithon McGrocklin here. What's up? Uh, let's have a little fun. For any new subscribers to my channel, I'm going to add you automatically to a giveaway that you could win some Daddario NYXL, some XTs, or even that cool headstand that you see me rest in the top of my guitar and love that thing. Um, or some other cool Daddario swag. All you have to do to enter is hit the subscribe button and that is it. Um, so yeah, good luck and let's continue the video. All right, let's go. I'm gonna start with a low E string, but I'm just gonna put that Allen key in there for now. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my trem, when we take this pressure off, it's gonna have something underneath it, so it's just not dinging into the body. I've already made that mistake before. And just take a rubber or an eraser, if you're in the US, and uh, stick that right under there. And that way, it's just got a little bit of support under there. Even if we took all the strings off, it would just kinda push into the, uh, the rubber as opposed to like going full force into the body. Let's start taking off the, the first string. Now, just while I'm doing this, generally when I um, get to the point where I feel like my guitar needs a restring, I look for two things. Uh, one is, what is the tuning stability like? Um, does it go out of tune a little bit more frequently? And the other thing is just general dullness. Um, now, usually I use the Daddario XTs or the NYXLs, and both are very, very good. Um, being very long life and they, they take a lot of punishment on my live streams, general recording, really, really great strings. I'll recycle all of these strings in a little bit. Um, so we've got that first uh, string off. The first thing I need is a set of strings. Today I'm gonna be using the NYXLs 9 to 42s uh, by the awesome guys over at Daddario. Now, even though I've been restringing guitars for quite some time, I always find that I still just need to look back at the packet and make sure all right, yes, silver is the high E string, brass is the lowest one, and so on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know why I like to just make sure I'm on the right track. So we'll uh, take this low E string out, stretch them across the table, and just grab the string that we need. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this end of the string and notice I've still got a couple of winds before this little nut comes out. And that's a, that's a nice sort of spot because that way we can pull it through and uh, we can start to get the string measured up because the way I'm gonna show you how to restring your guitar today is we don't want the jaggies. We want that end nice and smooth, just as it comes from the factory. We don't want um, <laughs> very, very sharp edges sticking out there that you could kill somebody with. So I usually stand up and sort of jiggle around and move around a little bit. Um, sometimes I have some music on and dance, but let me tell you what's going on. So we're going to unloosen this all the way. Can you see that? So this one here, you can see we've loosened it all the way back. I'm going to push that forward. And this is where I like to hold another Allen key. 
And basically, we're going to push that down into the, the little hole there, and I'm going to hold it in place with this Allen key. And by the way, no double ball ends, you know, I, I'm sure if you own a Kiesel guitar, you know that. Just regular guitar strings, okay? So we've got the ball end in the little pocket down there, and then I'm going to pull this end tight and pull it down a little bit to cause a little bit of a kink in the string. And whilst that's kinked, I'm going to take my thumb and just pop it there. And that means I can let go of that end and we are then in pretty good shape just to start clipping the end off. Now this is the point where you can't recover from, you know, you cut it too short, it is game over, the string is too short, you are done. But I think this way you're going to be pretty safe, you know, we've already got the, the ball end in the hole um, and when we clip it we're, we're actually going to pull it back ever so slightly which is going to make the string a little bit longer that's going to be even safer. Okay, so now we are going to go and clip the end off this string. So we're holding it firmly in place, trimming that back. And at this point, it's okay if it comes out because we've kind of cut what we need from the string, right? So at this point, you can see right here, we've got that little bit of string coming through. We're just going to pull it back just so it disappears. And that's going to mean for a nice smooth end piece on your guitar. Once we've done that, we're going to tighten it up. Don't overly tighten it um, because that will cut the string. So we've just got enough force that, you know, we can feel it. It's, it's firmly in place. I'm going to take our other Allen key and push it into that socket again. I'm just going to try and get a nice sort of grip. It will sort of, sort of grip at some point. You can see... So right there, it's hooked on nicely. I can feel it. And from here, we're going to start tightening it up. Now, if you feel that you've got a little bit too much string length, yeah, you've just been a little bit cautious. Um, right there, I think that's a good balance. Yeah, if we had too much string length, basically we'd have to put more winds on the tuner and then we would actually have more screw coming through the end of the tuner. So as you get more confident, you can start to get that string length absolutely perfect. So we've done the E string. Yeah, we can already stretch it. And it's pretty much good to go. So we're gonna go straight on with the A string. Just loosen that down. Wind it all the way out. Yeah, so you can see right there, we're going right to the edge. Push that all the way in, get that string out. And then unwind that A string at the top. Just give it two or three winds usually is all you need. You don't need to go too crazy. And then we'll pull that one out and wrap those strings ready for the recycle. Now and again, I actually <laughs> put these strings in with merch and stuff that uh, people buy on my store. I don't know if they appreciate it or not, but uh, it's quite fun. So we're going to do it exactly again. We're going to take this end piece, we're going to push it all the way through, and we're going to keep pulling until we just guesstimate enough string length. And then we're going to take the little Allen key, just get it ready. We're going to put the string through, push the ball end into the little hole which is waiting, and then we're just gonna pull it tight at the top. Yeah, that, that looks like a good fit, it's nice and snug. And then we're gonna find our clippers. We've held this string in place with the thumb, and that means we have enough string. And when we feed it through, right at the end here, we're gonna pull that through. And then we are gonna have the perfect string length. What you can do is you can hold it in place just at the top there, you can sort of imagine it, it's going in the ball and you know how much it's going to pull back, right? And if you think you're going to have a little bit too much string length, at this point, you just pull it out and just ever so slightly, don't go like this, like chopping the like crazy amounts off. Just take like one or so centimeters off that tiny bit, okay? So you can actually retrim it at this point just to make sure you've got the absolute perfect length for that string. Um, obviously, it's better to have too much than to have too little because if you have too little, you, you're not going to have a string on your guitar. You're going to have to open a new set of strings and nobody wants to do that, right? <laughs> so I think that is feeling nice and smooth at the top. There's no jaggies. We are good to tighten it up. There we go. Don't over tighten that. 
And we're going to take this other end, push it down into that little hole. Look for that nice little snug bite. There we go. It's bit onto the hook and we can start tightening it up. That's pretty good. We've got plenty of give there. The, the, the end screw is nowhere near uh, the end of the tuna, so we are good. But if you had um, too many winds and the screw start to come out, you could actually just un loosen it to the string all the way down, take the tension off, take the string off, and just snip a little bit of the, uh, the uh, string off and you'll be good. Do that all the time. Sometimes you just, you know, you're overly cautious on the string length and it means the string is a little bit longer than you'd really need. And um, it's no problem just to take the tension off. Oh, there's a little kink on that string, huh? All right, now we are onto the D string. We are flying, guys. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of video. Um, I have no idea if you will enjoy this or even appreciate it, but do let me know um, if you've enjoyed this video so far. Um, leave a comment, drop a thumbs up. All of that stuff really, really helps me out a huge amount. And um, it's really great just to see um, if you guys appreciate it or not. If not, I'll move on to other kinds of videos, you know, salsa dancing and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Right, what we are looking for is a D string. I enjoy this, this is nice and relaxing. So you guys know exactly the deal by now. We're gonna take that string, push it all the way through. Uh, we're gonna take our little small Allen key, push that ball end right into the little socket, hold it in place, pull it up tight, bend it down a little bit, get that little kink in that string, feels good. Lock it in place with our thumb. We're gonna let go of this guy now. Find our clippers, chop that end off. Woo! Almost nipped my finger there. And then we can just pull it back a little bit. See that? Jaggy's gone, nice and smooth. You don't want to restring it like a noob, guys. We want to restring like a pro. <laughs> Tighten that up a little bit. That's feeling good. And then let's get him back in his little socket. Push it down, get that grip. I can feel that. It's gripping. Begin tightening it up. Yeah, perfect. That is great. Now I'm going to move on to the G string. Yeah, I think it took me a couple of months or so just to feel comfortable. A lot of the time, even on this particular one, the high E is a little bit overwound. Um, you know, the more you do it, um, the more comfortable you'll get. A little tip that I have for you right now is sometimes the ball end can become a little bit of a problem. Um, literally just twist that string around with your left finger. Could be any finger, I guess, really. Um, well, your left finger, <laughs> your thumb and index finger, and just twist it uh, until you can get the right angle for the string to, to come out of its, uh, um, whatever it's in there, the, the kind of, I don't know, the trend bit. So basically, if it's like this, it's much easier to come out than it is sideways. It's more or less impossible. So you just kind of clamp it and just kind of twist it, get that angle to lift it out, and that will save you faffing around with that uh, G string or whichever string <laughs> you are using. Because I can tell you, nobody likes to faff around with their G string. They just want the thing straight off. We all know this. As these strings um, are more like flat wound or they don't have the, the, the ADE sort of winds on them, it gets a little bit trickier because there's less, um, there's less string to grip. You know, the string's just smoother. But we're gonna do exactly the same um, as what we did before. Take our little Allen key, push this tuna all the way forward. Um, get that nice angle. Pop it straight down into the hole. Pull it solid. Basically, when you get to this bit, it, it kind of wants to just slip back and forwards a little bit you know, more easily. Um, so we just put that kink, clamp it down with our left thumb, and I was gonna just tighten it, but uh, we have to snip it first. Snip that end off. And just pull it back a tad. There we go, nice and smooth. And then just lock it down. I feel we might be a little bit long on this one, but you never know, you never know. It's not too bad, so let's tighten it up. You can generally tell when your string length is a bit long because you'll be literally holding the string up here. Uh, you can see like this sort of little arc that I have going across here. That's generally the right ballpark, you know, because you want the ball end to go 
like underneath here so it doesn't accidentally come out when you're doing trem dives and stuff like that. Um, if it's you know too much of an arc then you're obviously going to have to put more winds on it. So we'll see here, we'll see. Pretty good. Yep, uh, there's no screw coming out the end of the tuner here, so plenty of winds left. So we're just gonna crack right onto the B string. Push it forward, get that ball out. There we go, nice and quick. B and E string are probably the hardest strings to get in there because obviously strings getting thinner wants to slide around a little bit more, but we're just gonna continue with exactly the same process. Push that forward as much as we can. Get the ball through, push the ball straight down into the hole with a little Allen key. Pull it nice and tight, get our thumb over it. Grab our cutters, cut a bit of string off. Ooh, I think that was probably not quite enough. So what I'm gonna do, I don't think I've cut enough string off. I'm just gonna simulate it by just pushing it into position and holding it and just kind of looking. And if you think that it's gonna be a little bit long, just pull it out at this point and just trim a tiny bit off, you know? Like I said, better to start with um, small cuts, you know? If you go too far, you've ruined that string. I'm thinking that's gonna be okay. So at this point, I'm just gonna tighten it. It's nice and smooth. Right at that end, pop it into the hole. Oh yes, straight in. And look at that arc, it's, it's kind of where I want it to be. It's not like all the way up here. It's a reasonable arc. Tighten that up. You hear that little bit of tension come out the string? That's all right. It's probably at the ball end, just gripping, jiggling around, but you can tell, you know, we can pull that up and down. We're doing fine. So we're gonna move on to the high E string. Definitely the trickiest one of all. Um, but we're just gonna go with the same process. Slacken all the way off. Push that through. Get that ball end to come straight out. Take our Allen key. Don't need to go too crazy with this one. Let's get it in there. Oh, that's been pretty tight previously. Two or three winds. Thinnest string, definitely the most tricky. We're gonna go straight through. Get that roughly at the right length. Twist it around a little bit to get it in. Push that tuna all the way forward and get the string into the hole. And then with our left middle and index finger, I'm gonna take the end of that string, pull it tight, get the thumb over it. That'll do, and we're gonna go straight in. Clip it, get rid of the excess, pull it back a little bit. And if you're thinking, you know, you just want to double check it, like I say, just pull it back a little bit, you know, it'll stay in the hole. And we can see if we are looking like it's the right kind of arc. And if you think you want to, you know, just get it even tighter, just trim a tad off like we've done previously. It doesn't need to be too much. Less is more. All right, and when I go to the end, I'm just kind of feeling for that string poking through and just smoothing it out and then tighten it right up. E strings are fine balance because right there, I think we need a little bit more, there we go, a little bit more torque on that one. Um, it feels like you need to put a little bit more force, but that is all right. It's just because it's a thinner string, right? And we happen to push those or tighten them further than the other strings. But this is all looking good. Nice little arc, tightening it up. Almost there, guys. Now, usually, you know, even though I've been doing this for a little while now, you know, everybody does that. <laughs> Instincts. So, all strings are on, that was it. So what would I do next? Well, we still have the eraser or the rubber under the trim. So at this point, I'm gonna just give them a little bit of a stretch back and forth. This is the way I stretch my strings, pull them up and down. And we can tune the guitar 
a little bit like this, but obviously because there's a lot of weight in that trim system, we are gonna have to um, get it the right way around. And then you can plug in your tuner, use a different tuner. Um, so pretty, pretty close really. We'll take that razor straight out, turn on the tuner, and we'll start to get the thing in tune. Usually what I'll also do is just really max that trem out, put as much tension. Give him a good little stretching. Back and forwards, simulate the playing. And that way, when we do start to tune it up for real, it'll be a lot more stable. And a lot of the time, instead of tuning down, I actually just prefer to stretch the string. Because what you'll find is when you start to slacken the string off with a tuner, and then you give it a little stretch, it's actually gonna go flatter again. So, there we are. I'm not gonna do all fine tuning at this stage, because really, we can only get so far in tune. Uh, whilst it's on its back like this. So at this point, I would pick up the guitar. That's pretty, pretty in tune already. You can see there, I'm leaning into the strings and listen. And it's like bang on in tune. So we could go and track some guitars, do a live stream right now, and I'd have every confidence that this guitar is gonna be absolutely ready to rock. I use this Daddario spray cleaner. This is really nice and, oh, smells so good as well. Whew, love the smell of that. Smells so good and uh, makes the guitar look very, very shiny. So double win. And also at the top of this guitar, nice and smooth. We could rub a balloon over that and it would not pop. And that's exactly how I like to have my Kiesel guitars restrung. Guys, thank you so much for watching my first how-to video. If you wanna see more of these type of videos, um, let me know in the comments. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you would like me to shoot next. That, yeah, let me know. And also, if you found it valuable and useful, then please also subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out a lot. But for now, you guys take it easy and I will see you on the next video. All right, take care, bye.